CFAX 1070. Good morning. Thanks for staying with us. Frank Stanford will be with you at 10.30 this morning. Right now we're continuing with our all candidates forum here, live in our CFAX 1070 in CTV News studios at Broad and Pandora. If you would like to join the conversation this morning, the phone number to dial 250-386-1161, star 1070. Just a reminder, the candidates that are here today, the organic and conservative party, Donald Galloway for the Greens, Philip May for the Christian Heritage Party, Karen Rankin for the New Democrats, and Paul Somerville for the Liberals. The candidate is not present with us, but is still running. He was sick today, couldn't join us. It's part of the Libertarian Party. Before the break, I ask you to select a question that uh, you can ask of any other candidate. We're going to start uh, this session with Don Gallery from the Greens. Don, who's your question? I have a question for Marty Rankin. And the question is this. What would you do if your party leader, a strong disciplinarian, required you to vote in a way that you believed was counter to the interests of your representatives, your constituents in Victoria? The premise of the question is that uh, I would be voting against the interests of my constituents in Victoria were I uh, successful in this campaign. I would not vote against the interests of my constituents. I accept that part of party discipline is part of our, our parliamentary process, part of our traditions as Canadians. However, I believe that it's important that I represent the interests of Victoria and stand up for Victoria in Ottawa. Let me ask a follow-up question on that. I'm going to try and do that. Let's say you put into really a kind of a very tough situation. It's either voting to keep your party in power mm -hmm. or voting with your interests of your constituents. Which way would you go? If I have listened to the people of Victoria, consulted widely, and, and if the premise of your question is that they all are opposed to the position that I would be required to take, I would have to I would have to resign or I would have to you know, I would have to take steps to address that. In other words, I would want to listen first to ensure that there really was that conflict that you've talked about. Okay, now we're going to go to Paul Somerville. Your question, and who is it for? This, uh, this by-election uh, isn't going to change our Prime Minister or Parliament, uh, but it's become a referendum on the sewage issue uh, because it's so important. So this is a question from Mary Rankin. Uh, about a month ago, uh, on uh, Stephen Andrews' show, uh, along with Don Galloway, uh, you were asked about the terrible tax impact for families and businesses here in Victoria, and you responded by saying, it wasn't your problem. Are you prepared to apologize to the people of Victoria for what is probably a heartless comment? <laughs> I apologize if that were the quote uh, accurately perceived. I suspect it was taken out of context, but look, let me tell you my position. I want this to be the most cost-effective plan possible. It is not the federal government's plan. I'm seeking federal office. It's the plan of a regional district trying to comply with provincial and then federal laws. I will work hard to make it the most cost-effective and environmentally acceptable plan possible. Murray, you can't hide behind legal mumbo-jumbo. If you go to my website, we have it clearly there where you say, it's not my problem, period. Okay. You, is it possible you said that? I probably did, but if so, it was out of context. Of course, everything is the federal government's problem, ultimately, but listen, this plan is a plan that is in response to a federal and, of course, initially a B.C. liberal government requirement. That still is the law. I'm sorry if I, I'm not apologizing for being a lawyer. Those are the legal facts of life. The reality is that you had the chance to sympathize with the businesses and people in Victoria who are going to be so harmed by the sewage well, tax increase, and what you said was, it wasn't your problem. I even gave you a chance a couple weeks later when I mentioned to you on air that I thought that Tom Walker, under Tom Walker's leadership that the NDP had lost its soul. If I could just, Again, I just, just quickly wrap this up, guys, because we want to get other people This is a chance to okay. apologize. Last comment to Murray Rankin. I am so pleased that the Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Victoria have joined with environmental organizations to stand up okay, and say we need second century. Let's go to Philip May. Philip, who's your question for? I'd like to ask all my fellow candidates. Well, you, you get to ask one. One candidate. Oh, I'll ask her. All right. Do you support? Is he Go ahead. <laughs> <That's a good guy. laughs> Do you support uh, the UN document Agenda 21 and the use of abortion to create this depopulation and globalization? I will need to know, I'll know a lot more about uh, agenda, United Nations documents, but I can tell you that our party has proudly been pro-choice from the get-go and stood up recently unanimously, contrary to other parties, against Rona Ambrose's position on that. In spite of what science says. Okay, let's go to um, Dale Gann. Your question, who is it for? 
Um, this question is from Murray Rankin. It seems um, like Murray is the one to knock off today. Well, I've listened to this radio sto uh, station for a long time as a kid that grew up here, and uh, for the last 10 years, I've, I've uh, wondered what the uh, economic priority, what the economic plan of the NDP government is. I think it's the most important. I think Victoria has a chance to elect a member to the table of the uh, sitting government, and I'd like to know, Murray, yes. what your plan is, what your party's plan is to strengthen in our economy. Just one minute, a question? Okay. Well, let me just say that I was a, uh, a managing partner of a very successful small business, a law firm in this community, for over a dozen years. A job plan is not like Christy Clark's job plan, which is spin and political advertising. A job plan is standing up and ensuring that we have value, a value-added economy, and not inciting uh, temporary foreign workers, but rather finding jobs for Canadians. Not shipping our jobs to Asia via a pipeline that your party supports. Can I ask you a follow-on question then? Why is it that your leader um, opposed a $3,000 tax credit for a small business to hire a new hire when they're trying to create more revenue out there in the streets? It's I not acceptable. I'm all for, for looking constructively at tax incentives. I mentioned the capital gains so rollover as one that your party did not support, despite the Nice Savoy and the real estate board being in favor. Well, hang on, that I mean, very stuff would make a great difference in this local economy. You've just, been, Mars, you've just been asked a question. You've done just the political thing. That's right. Dale, I'll ask you a question again, and this time we're going to get an answer. The question? Simply put, what is the NDP's job plan to strengthen Canada's economy and Victoria's? 2% tax cut for small business. That has been one of the main planks in the last uh, campaign, and I stand by that. Uh, Murray Rankin, you get to ah, ask a question. Me. Well, I'll ask Mr. Gann then. Uh, and as you know, Mr. Gann, the Conservatives' omnibus budget bill repealed the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act and replaced it by a much weaker statute. How does this relate to the pipeline projects in British Columbia? Well, I'm going to say that uh, what I know about what they've done um, is they've tried to, to streamline it. And if you use the word streamline it, everybody all of a sudden gets concerned and says we're not doing it thoroughly. What I know is I've watched business and engineering firms try to bring projects to increase and do things in a responsible way, but the prior process was so encumbered, so lengthy, that it took so long for us to get a darn project done that it's stymied production of jobs and ultimate projects. I need to take a break when we come back. My tough questions for each of these candidates. So you're going to want to hear them and uh, their answers and see if they're going to buckle under the pressure when we continue here on CFAX. Buckle under pressure when Andrew's It's the more points of it, it's the more points of it. It's the more points of it. It's the more points of more points of it. It's more points of 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 more points if upgrading your garage door is on your list of fall home improvement projects, it's time to get started. Operador is making it easy to improve the curb appeal of your home during the closure and savings event. For a limited time, replace your old garage door with a beautiful new energy efficient model and receive up to $125 off select club paid garage doors and team it up with a new Keep that free. Visit the Harbor Door Showroom at Tunes and Mary Street, accelerating over 25 years in business. If you have trees, shrubs, or soil, they need the expertise of our last spot for the trees. The trees are in your yards and gardens over the next few months. The results of pest and disease damage become apparent. Before you see the damage, it is advisable to have a I'll ask you the next one. Let's go to how Bell makes Black Friday better. Made from Samsung and Motorola Superphones, November 23rd to 26th. Visit a Bell store for details. Bell, saving just got better. 
in a landscape of stories, the devoid and tender is on the ground, trapped in a faraway land, and he was doing everything he could to help them find their way back. Okay, here we go, guys. We're in a show right now. Welcome back to the program. I'm going to make sure that we get one quick call in for the five candidates that are here in our studio. We're going to do that right now. I'm going to go to John in Victoria. John, good morning. Welcome to CPAX 1070. Very quickly, sir, your question for our candidates. Okay, here's the question. Canada's economy seems to be doing quite well throughout the world, yet Europe's economy is falling apart. What, why, what has happened to Europe? What is the problem? Okay, well, uh, I'll give you each about maybe 10 seconds on it's, that. Dale Gann? It's very, oh, it's very, Dale, changing your name to Paul. Sorry. Let's go to Dale Gann. <laughs> well, I, I think, listen, you're right, sir, on, uh, and thank you for the call. Um, Canada's economy is doing well, and obviously we've just watched the International Monetary Fund chief just say it's a model financially for the world. Um, I think we have to recognize that and be proud of that. Um, we live in a global economy, and it's a tough economy. Uh, we need to steward it very well. Paul Somerville from Liberals. It's very simple. The Europeans have built a monetary and fiscal program that don't work, uh, and they've, they've backed themselves into disaster. Let's go to Don Gallery from the Green Party. The amount of personal debt that has been incurred by individuals in Europe is beyond the means of the countries to look after. Let's go to Phil Nay from the Christian Heritage Party. A uh, question obviously on why is uh, Europe's economy failing when, uh, uh, sorry, uh, when Canada's economy seems to be booming? The Prime Minister of Hungary went on record to say Europe must return to Christianity before economic regeneration is possible. And finally, Murray Rankin. I think it, it, it's, um, it's grounded as well in the failure to agree on stimulus programs and having a great dissension at the, the EU level on what exactly should be done. Okay, tough questions uh, for you now, very briefly, and I need each of you to really get tough on this. We'll go to Paul Somerville. Um, your Achilles heel, a couple of days. I'm, uh, I'm a very private person. And uh, this is a very, very public profession. And I think uh, by being very, by being very private, there are times when uh, I want to say what I think, and I'm going to have to learn to think about it more carefully. Philip Day, your Achilles heel in this campaign. I'm sorry, your Achilles heel, your weakness in this campaign. Oh, my Achilles heel. Uh, I have taken a very consciously a different and, in some areas, unpopular. But it is still strongly scientific. I'm a scientist. I publish scientific papers. People don't want to talk about abortion, but it's underlying all we'll sorts get to of that. problems. We'll get to that in a minute. Rory I, I think um, I have a lot of faults for sure, uh, but my uh, uh, following on the, in the footsteps of someone as popular as Denise Savoy and having big uh, a hard act to follow is something I hear about all the time on the doorsteps. That's your Achilles heel. Well, like you say that. So I know what you're saying is I, I, you can't measure up to Denise and what? I, worry, I worry about that perception for sure. And I'm also uh, obviously worried about the, the toll on personal life in a job like this. It's tough. I guess tell you that I, I watch it on the side. Dale Gann? Um, I, I'm, uh, I guess, you know, I'm an individual that uh, has been soft taught, taught and learned. And uh, I, I realize that this is a, this is a very, uh, important job to represent our community and uh, you need to be able to be uh, very effective at listening and learning and leading. And is that, is that your Achilles heel? No, it's not my Achilles heel, but it's incredibly important. My Achilles heel that I, I'm probably uh, running, representing a government, a standing government, and throughout this whole election, it's been blame the government and versus look at Victoria and my ability to help our, our economy. So the government, your Achilles heel is your, is your government? Pardon? You're, you're, when you're in an elected government, it's a, it's a, is that a yes? <laughs> is that a yes? Your Achilles heel is the government. Is that a yes? Compared to my candidates, yes. <laughs> okay. I love it when people say yes and not actually next. Let's go to Don Gallery. I've uh, committed myself to a high road campaign that is based upon principles. I'm finding that there is information out there that is based upon scare tactics rather than faith. But I'm, is that your Achilles heel? Well, I think that the Achilles heel is that we know that in election campaigns, negative tactics can work. 
I'm refusing to go that uh, that direction. But Donald, you're the one where you have the false endorsement by David Suzuki. I no materials. Pardon? David, I, Suzuki I, was, I had, David Suzuki was falsely identified as an endorser on your materials. It came out that it's a front page column in the Times columnist. You've been doing the hot, you know, the high road campaign, and yet you're the one who's falsely used one of Canada's icons to support your party. I have had David Suzuki support at a uh, stated support at a rally in which he des described me as a dedicated individual, a, that the Green Party was lucky to have me as their candidate. He went out of his way to state that he supported me. Donald, so what, page what, what, the, what has the Times columnist got it wrong? Maybe? Has David Suzuki changed his mind since I then? think that there is an issue about David Suzuki having a, uh, a uh, concern about the use of the term endorsement as opposed to the use of the term support. David Suzuki made some so very he, clear... So he doesn't endorse you, but he supports but you. But he that supports me. That, I think, is my position. And I didn't pick up in the early dealings with him that he actually drew this distinction. You endorse a project, you support a person. Okay. David Suzuki clearly comes out, and it's on YouTube. You can hear the things that he says about me as a candidate. He clearly states... Let's go. You want to talk about abortion, but hey, let's do it. I understand that you are not pro-choice. Is that true? That's not true. You can't stop people choosing. That's ridiculous. They can choose to end. I can't stop them. That's not the point. The point is that the vast majority of Canadians don't support abortion on demand. And yet they have to pay taxes for a bad medical procedure. You want to look at the science? Universal. So would you stop if you, if you were elected and your party, the Christian Heritage Party, the Canadian government, would they stop abortion? Uh, don't be silly. I mean, what you're I'm doing. I'm not being I'm asking you a question, sir. I'm going to ask you a question if you'd be quiet. I am for the practice of good medicine. If it's good for women, I support it. And if it's a good and necessary abortion, I'll do it myself. But the uh, findings are very clear abortion interferes with the development of subsequent children. They have more okay. birth weight and so subsequent. Let me ask you a direct question then, uh, Philip. If a woman decided, became pregnant, and decided for no other reason than that she really did not want to carry the child to term, should that be allowed? I'm a doctor. What do I say if somebody says I want to cut my arm off? I say it's not good for you. I'm not going to do that. It's ridiculous. There's nothing necessary about having, and when we do a study on wanting babies, it increases during the pregnancy. Do you know that? So uh, even I'm obviously not going to get a straight answer to my question. Paul, well, some of the old women's right to choose. 100% uh, support. You've already said there's 100% support. Dale Gann? It's a personal issue. Um, and uh, in your example of, of a mother getting um, in that situation, um, gee, I, you know, having the, having, that, that's a personal issue. And, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see someone have to be forced to have that baby. But you would take no steps to, to make it illegal? Um, I would take this first step as your elected MP to talk to the citizens and ask what they want to do. It's pretty clear, uh, Dale, that most women support their right over their own bodies, for goodness sakes. Not as much as men. Yeah. No answer to that, Dale, right? No, I made my point. Okay, all right. 100%. 100%. Okay, I'm going to give you each 30 seconds to make a statement. They're going to be different. Okay, uh, 30 seconds. So we'll start with Paul Somerville, and I'll just let you know when you got uh, uh, 10 seconds uh, to wrap up. Okay, Paul? Thank you, Victoria, for having the chance uh, to speak to you. This, this by-election is not going to change a Prime Minister, uh, and it's not going to change Parliament. It's become a referendum on a wasteful sewage treatment plant, and it's very simple. A vote for Paul Somerville is a vote to stop the billion-dollar boondoggle, and a vote for Murray Rankin is for it to continue, with the terrible tax increases that will push business and people out of our city. Thank you, Paul Somerville, representing the Liberal Party of Canada. We are now going to move on to... Murray Rankin, who is representing the New Democrats. 30 seconds for you. The, gov the government of Canada is led by Stephen Harper. His values are not our values. I do not believe that fighter jets over $20 billion, cuts of $36 billion to Medicare, denying climate change action, or gutting our environmental legislation are our values. I want to represent Victoria in Ottawa, not the other way around, and stand up to him every day in the House of Commons. Thank you, Murray Rankin. Uh, just uh, so you know, when I do the, the signal, you have 10 seconds left. 
prior ranking from uh, the NDP. Now we go to Philip Lane for the uh, Christian Heritage Party at 30 seconds. The wise man said, listen most carefully for what you do not want to hear. And I say to my people, my friends in Victoria, truly, you know me. I have stood up for unpopular things all since I was on the elected position in the school board. I've done that, and I've done very unpopular things, but they are scientific and they are pragmatic. Listen to what medical science has to say and what economics has to say. We cannot run a free market economy on a declining population. That's it. More, more taxes. All my friends are for more taxes. Thank you. It will not work. Bill Payne from Christian Heritage. Now go to uh, Donald Galloway from the Green Party. Donald, 30 seconds. I would like the opportunity to work alongside the most effective, most popular politician and political leader in Canada. The one who took the lead dealing with the omnibus budget bills and the China-Canada investment agreement. I am asking the people of uh, Victoria to be bold, to have faith, because on November the 27th, there will be joy in your heart if you vote for Greens. Thank you, Donald Gallery. And our final candidate here in the studio is uh, Dale Gant from the Conservatives. Dale, you have 30 seconds starting now. An election is not about a day, it's about a future. I have demonstrated that I'm a champion for this community. I have discussed throughout my campaign the opportunities, not just the issues, how to strengthen our economy and how to work with our government. We may not always agree with them, but we must learn to work with governments. I am the best representative for this job. I have put a lot of thought in this, and I have a proven track record. I look forward to your vote. Thank you. Thank you, all candidates. We are out of time. <laughs>